I'm Jorgen, I'm from Estonia. My gym is Voimla, it's two hours south from the capital. Come make your own jiu-jitsu camp. Globetrotters train for free for two weeks. So, so you can train for like 10 times a week when, when at our place, get in touch and, and, and step by. Um, uh, that's, uh, that's me and I'm, I'm the head coach. Kind of. I, I, nowadays I mostly teach jiu-jitsu, not so much MMA anymore. Uh, yeah, been doing jiu-jitsu since 2003-ish. Uh, tried it a bit earlier. So, and technically my gym is the oldest BJJ and MMA gym in Estonia. That's the one thing I have over Preet, is that I, I, I made it official on papers before he did. He actually started training like two years before that. Um, so, uh, but we're not rivals. We're always trained a lot together and, and get along nicely. Okay. Um, people say I smile more than, than he does. Um, that aside, the, the weird stuff uh, of the footwear attire, I have one boot because I completely dislocated my pinky toe two days ago. So, uh, so and at the same time, I need to show some stuff with a foot, so I just need to have one boot. Looks weird, but that's the best protection for a dislocated toe. Uh, if I'm gonna get ridiculing YouTube comments, I mean, it helps the algorithm, so I win. Um, the other thing is that my voice might snap or crack like I'm going through puberty again, despite being almost 40. So that's because of, I had pretty bad laryngitis last week, so we'll see how it holds up. Okay, um, so uh, kind of the MO, and, and you can decide now after the like small minute of intro that I'll, I'm going to do, uh, if this class is actually for you. I'm going to try to explain what I'm going to do in the hour. So it's called bad judo, but good enough for BGJ. So I'm glad that there's no no gi people because it's going to be jacket paste. Uh, you, you need a jacket for that class. And for several years, since about 10 years ago, it was like uh, a challenge as an instructor for me was how to teach wrestling to adults. And this really bogged my brains because kind of the way traditional wrestling coaches taught which was the way they were used to when the students they had were either kids and or athletes. It didn't work for hobbyists who might want to wrestle just like once or at most twice per week. It was either too hard, too injury prone, too boring for, for the population that we have in jiu-jitsu. Everybody was keen, like, oh, we should learn some stand-up. But when you actually started to do some stand-up, then after a week or two, was like, oh, maybe we can go back to more ground again. So, uh, so that was a problem I tried to solve. And I think about two or three years ago, I kind of cracked the code. And I think we have a pretty good blueprint in my gym, which is now like a 10-session 10 10 session cycle that we do. Like from zero, once per week, 10 sessions, rinse and repeat. Um, basically four of the sessions that we have from the 10 session program, four of those sessions are already I've taught in Globetrotters class. These are the two classes. One is called All Takedowns You Ever Need to Know. Uh, and the other is Simple Upper Body Wrestling for BJJ. You put those together and basically you have a offensive wrestling blueprint for BJJ that's going to take you, I mean, you can practice that for... I don't know, five years and you're still going to improve and, and you don't need to add nothing technically new and you can build a whole wrestling game based off of that. All the while when you're learning, you don't need to take too many hard falls. Okay, so I think I solved the wrestling. But judo was still a mystery because kind of we don't have time to learn the freaking 40 classical throws, right? It's, it's too much. And, and obviously good judoka... I have some excellent coaches, judo coaches in my town. I've trained with them. But it's all geared towards people who practice judo, like three and five times per week. And, and even then, it's, it's rarely beginning adults. At least in Estonia, you don't have beginner adults, or beginner adults in judo are very, very rare. So the teaching is, again, geared towards either kids or athletes. So uh, I kind of tried to think about it, how to do it. And the other thing is that as judo is specifically classical, still, they do a lot of kind of these repetitions and you do your one-step, two-step, three-step throw, one-step, two-step, three-step throw. And my mind is allergic to that type, type of stuff. So, so, so I've been trying to solve that. And now I think I might have something, okay? 
So, so that's what I'm trying to pass on here. And what are we actually going to do today is that we're going to focus exclusively on upper body like uh, gripping and kind of how to manipulate the upper body to basically get a throw or, or something throw-like that would be good enough for BJJ. We're not going to do any wrestling from the legs. You can add that kind of, if you know it, you can do it also today, but I'm not going to cover any of that. Obviously, for BJJ, that's also very necessary in, in Gi as well. Um, but what I'm teaching today is essentially what it should allow you to do is to take this material and learn and practice something judo-like at your home gym as little or as much as you want while slowly progressing. And you build a skill that would actually allow you to go to a judo gym or, or judo, a visiting judoka, uh, and it kind of will look like judo. Like, they will frown upon you occasionally, but, uh, but, but it's kind of you can play the game. So, so it's kind of how to be able to, at least on some level, play the game of judo without actually having to learn to judo. And obviously it has a carryover to like competition part, but there's the big caveat that you can have the greatest judo in the world, but if your opponent pulls card in the first second, you, you, you don't get the chance to throw them for two points. Like, so that's just the way how the sport is, is built. So, but, but especially in like older divisions, it becomes very necessary because like master's divisions and especially kind of higher weights, you, you kind of see like very, very bad judo matches sometimes. Just kind of two guys walking back and forth and actually not being able to do anything. So, so, so maybe today's class is going to help with that. Uh, in today's class, you won't have to take many uh, falls and especially like you don't have to take like any super hard break falls, but there's going to be some falling. So, so if you kind of are injured or tired, then you're welcome to just watch from the sidelines or whatever. But overall, the class is not going to be very hard. Okay, so, and uh, before we get started, kind of why the name, bad judo, but good enough for BJJ, and also why I said that like, you can go to a judo gym, but they will frown upon you occasionally when you do that stuff, what we do today, is that... Wim quoted uh, me on that yesterday. The point is that if we think about stuff that is banned from judo, like leg grabs, kind of belt grabs, holding on to belt for long, like they are banned for a reason. And the reason is that they work in context of free grappling. Therefore, we should actually aim for doing all those things that are forbidden in judo rules, okay? All the defensive grips, all the deep grips, all that stuff with the only exception of, of Kani Basami, which is the schizer takedown, which is also forbidden in BJJ, and that's really dangerous for the, uh, for the knee if you do it with people who, who don't expect. So that, that doesn't count. But other than that, you should do all the stuff that's kind of over time being thrown out from competitive judo. You should use that for BJJ because it works, okay? Let's get started. So, stand up and we'll go into things. I'll use my Uke, Arthur. So, uh, uh, again, uh, I think as quite several of you, of you already took, uh, you took Aaron's class and Wim's class. You can do all those things that were done in those classes off of what we do today. You can kind of incorporate that to drills. People who know judo, I'm not saying that you, you kind of have to stick to what I do. You can add different techniques into what I do. So, uh, Wim was all about like symmetrical posture. Uh, I uh, encourage you kind of force asymmetrical posture. And uh, the same uh, Jimmy Pedro tape that he talked about, that I cut it from, is that actually it's really bad. Uh, I, I mean, it's not that bad, but if somebody gets my collar, kind of a strong collar grip, either like that or the, take the classical judo grip, which is people look for, I would prefer not to, at least in the start. So, uh, let's go. So actually, I always focus on, in the beginning, I can be symmetrical or kind of asymmetrical, I focus on blocking the lead hand, blocking their lead hand, okay? So kind of, if they start try to reach, I can kind of do this boxing thing, and I actually try to do a sleeve grip off of that myself. I try to get a sleeve first, okay? So what we're actually gonna do now is that as the first thing, Remember, belt grips are forbidden and, and same side grips are forbidden in judo. Let's try to practice uh, this sequence. You kind of 
agree, he's the okay, tries to reach for my collar, I kind of try to, uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't have to feed it, like, it's kind of, and I try to get the grip on a sleeve, any kind of grip that happens is good, yeah? And now, do whatever movement you need to do to get a belt grip with the other hand. Obviously, I cannot let that go. So, either you do an arm drag, that not taut, kind of, whoop, or you might kind of feed it here, and take here, and take a belt grip, okay? So you get two and one, and then you practice just holding this position. So, uh, so kind of, uh, they can try to retract their arm and kind of pull back, and you just kind of stay here, keeping the belt and, and kind of ride it a little bit. And then we let go, and now, now I'm the one who's reaching, and he tries to get the sleeve off of that, get the sleeve and belt, and keep the position for like five seconds. All clear, let's go, I don't need clapping, just go off, shoe, do your thing. So why it's actually good is that if I kind of focus on that, I can sometimes, there's an off chance that I can, if we talk about competitive jiu-jitsu now, uh, and, and like IBJJF rules, is that I might be able to kind of mess a little with a guard puller. Because what they look for, like in IBJJF, it's not legal to pull guard without a grip, so they need a grip to pull guard, right? <clears throat> so if I'm kind of focusing on like, kind of hindering their grip, usually they go for a sleeve, if they're like a super guard puller, because they, they don't dare to reach. But if I'm kind of like giving, feeding my sleeve here, and I get the sleeve here, they are gonna be hesitant to pull. Okay, they are going to be hesitant to pull, and the, uh, they can pull because my grip also counts as a grip. But what happens now, and what's important in regards to all those who want to compete, is that when I get the grip on anywhere on the leg soon enough while they pull guard, I might get takedown points. Like even if I'm not doing any actual like super takedown motion, I just need to have a grip on the leg. Obviously, it's going to depend on if my opponent and the referee are both Brazilian or not, but, uh, but I might get lucky. And the other reason is that, um, that uh, it also counts like, take some grip, take some grip, yeah, and if you now start to pull guard in any way, I can already get like some kind of a leg grip if I'm really quick. So this instance, for example, that happened right now, uh, Maybe some ref might, might have given two points, most probably not, because it's kind of his initiation. But especially in the variations that they, let's say, grab a collar and put a leg on the hip, kind of step on the hip. If I'm doing something like that, I might, I might really get like two points, because I had the leg grip while they were pulling guard. Okay? So, so this is something just to think about and be conscious about. And always, you should try to aim for it. Like you start, if, if you... Like, if you start sparring or positional sparring and somebody just sits down, that's fine. But if you start standing and somebody then sits down, try to kind of fish for their leg, if, if competitive jiu-jitsu is also your mindset. Okay, let's go on with a bad judo. So, uh, we did bad judo in the sense that same side grip is forbidden, and also uh, keeping a belt grip for long is also forbidden. So, we kind of got here. I'm not going to cover like fundamental takedowns from here because it should be relatively easy kind of to, to figure out how to trip or kind of yank them to the ground, force them to the, to the ground. Also, don't forget that if I have kind of this type of grip and here, and if I just like, let's say, block the leg and they kind of come to all fours, if they come to all fours and they get a grip behind their both armpits, either two collars, lock my hands on tight waist or something like that, I'm gonna get two points for takedown, just for that. Okay, because both knees are on the ground, in IBJJF rules, this counts as a takedown. If I can fixate the position for, for three seconds. So, um, you should always go on two on one. We're gonna do one more situation. So, he goes for collar and actually gets my collar. Okay, I could do some grip breaks, but my fingers don't like it. So. What I actually kind of like to do more, because it's super hard to break a grip, especially somebody who gets a strong grip. I like to take a sleeve grip here, or wherever really, 
And what I like to do now is that I like to do bad judo in the sense that I'm going to use an illegal grip. So I'm turning in. Like you can do obviously the stuff Aaron showed and all that works as well. But uh, another variation is that I can turn inwards and take a two on one here. Okay? And actually from here I could also take the belt grip. And they're kind of screwed with their grip. Their grip doesn't work anymore. Okay? So let's do the same exercise. The only thing is that he can be a bit more active in regards to grabbing my collar. So I don't get like I can't block it off. He actually gets my collar. And my reaction, one of the possible reactions, kind of think through it. Aha, uh -huh. okay, here's that grip. I, I don't want him to get my sleeve. That would be bad. But even if he does, let's say, it's still one, two, shut by, and you can go grab the belt here. And you're in a good position. Okay? So either of two scenarios. You're good and you're getting the sleeve. Maybe you're getting the sleeve already here. You yank and get the belt grip straight away. Or you're late. He gets the collar, you grab from here, and you immediately wrench inwards, and if you have access to the back, get the back grip. Like, cloth, doesn't matter, like, doesn't have to be the belt if I kind of get some cloth here. What is important, what I saw some people kind of not paying attention to, is that don't stay out here. You always want to close in your elbows, hip in and chest in, so, so kind of here, right? So, so don't be like bent over here, but this is your squat stance, what, what we did, right? Okay, and pull them tight in, you kind of pull and also move. And that's variations from here. Last thing for warm up, then we get into throws. Go ahead. Just to emphasize kind of, you, you take the grip and uh, like you don't have to think about breaking the grip, but you kind of shoulder in and, and you give like vibes like wrist lock and key lock vibes here with a movement. Okay, you move here and you kind of chest forward. And I'm not going to cover throws from this position because there is an excellent Globetrotters video already. Check it out. It's Joey Zente and I think it's just drag them down is, is, is the title. And he covers specifically throws from two on one position. So, so nice video. I'm not going to double down on that. So, so, so go for your bad judo. But in regards kind of overall grip fighting thing, I think these are the most important for a non judoka who does, like this won't work obviously in judo competition, but, but you can spar with judoka doing that. As I said, they will frown a little bit, but usually they won't kind of, oh, this is illegal. Like it's, it's, they're going to manage. Um, so grip fighting things first block their strong hand, block their lead hand, as opposed to trying to maybe attack the grip super aggressively yourself. Be happy when you get the sleeve grip first. That's actually a really good start. Because I find if you go against somebody good, it's super hard to get the collar first. Sometimes you do, but, uh, but, but so going for the sleeve is a good idea. And when you're having grips, think about same-sided grips and belt grips. Even if you don't know what you're doing. Um, there was a, is there a judoka here, like judo black belt, judo brown belt, anybody? Yes, come on please, I'll, I'm going to use you for a while. Uh, take your favorite grips, Justin. So, kind of, okay, like favorite grips, like he has the very classical wrist and that. So if I go with a good judoka, I should be like, okay, 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 what should I do? Kind of, can I take two on one? Uh, probably not because he's going to hold me here. But, like, if I'm just going to stall them, I'm going to take the belt here. Yes, this is illegal, so that's what I'm going to do. So, and, and, and it's, it's probably going to mess up with their game a little bit, especially if they haven't been in the mindset that, that somebody might dare to use an illegal grip against them. Okay, and from here, maybe, I don't know, maybe they try something, and then you can maybe already go like, okay, and I have the belt grip, and actually, I can go here, and I go from his strong grip into actually my strong grip. He can kind of frown upon it, but, but if I now do a judo-ish throw, then... He's probably, like, most judo, like, they will forgive you. Or you can also say, like, hey, I'm a jiu-jitsu guy, I'm trying to do that stuff. Most judo gyms are nice, actually, that I've experienced, and they kind of allow you to even do leg grabs. So, so, so kind of consider that. When in doubt, go for more grips, get the belt grips, get the two-on-one -on -one grips, right? If, if they manage to get the grip. Okay, so this is that. Now we're going to go into how to build, like, a throwing game. Um... And from that, I have to thank or 
give credit where credit is due. My main influences have been VJJ Scout with uh, his study of planes, if somebody knows what I'm talking about, and uh, it's a YouTube channel, uh, especially the study on Rodolfo Vieira that he did. Uh, and uh, the other uh, YouTube channel that's been hugely influential on how I think about judo and how I think about the techniques is uh, Shintaro Higashi, maybe somebody knows. Super cool guy and then he had some health trouble recently so go click the subscribe and, and follow and, and I think it helps him out a little bit. So, come on. Uh, <clears throat> so, listen, say that I'm going to talk about So what is the study of, of planes or what is kind of important is that actually I would say like judo to a degree is even simpler, kind of wanting to throw somebody or take them down because like it's just like it's always two feet as contact points with the ground. You know sweeping it can be way more variations. It can be like one knee down and two knees down and maybe one hand here. But in judo it's always two feet like or in stand-up grappling it's always two feet. So however the feet are I can imagine a straight line kind of through the feet, right? Currently is standing parallel, so, so I will illustrate uh, stand on this kind of uh, crossing here. Yes, so okay, so, so here is one straight line, here is another straight line. And if somebody stands like this, we know like the easiest like throw or, or how to put them down is when I block both legs around, along the line and I push, they will fall. You have the classical, I won't even sweep you, but if I hook here, and if I push on the knees really hard, he will fall onto his ass. We call them the tailbone sweeps, because you always want to push towards that their tailbone would hit the mat. Okay? So, so this is the easiest kind of, and, and you need to think about always the lines, because the classic is that you're here, you might want to start to push, and he steps back a little bit. Now the line has changed into this angle. So now if I want to push, he won't fall if I push here, but if I kind of push here exactly at a 90 degree angle with the line while both feet are blocked, he will fall onto his tailbone. Sorry for the surprise. I promise that I won't throw him too much. But uh, and the same you see in wrestling. Like Jordan Burroughs head first double leg, essentially it's about now I won't, I won't take you down. If you blast in, block both legs, drive with the head straight back, it's a line, 90 degree angle, both legs blocked, they will fall. And this is one type of throw as well. Straight back, the, the, the predicament for that is that both feet need to be blocked, unable to move. Okay? Straight back. The other main direction is straight forward. Now here, the problem is that here is a line again, stand here, stand here, so this is the line. I would need to, essentially it's mechanically the same, so if I want to trip somebody from the back, essentially if I put my shoulder here, put these hands here and drive, he will plant his hands, right? Mechanics is totally the same. The problem is when we're fr wrestling front to front, like we usually do, it's kind of, how, how would I do that, right? It's kind of to, to block both feet and now where's the engine to push? I don't have like this type of thing. So that means straight front, you have the classical turn throws. Like you have your, let's say, hip and arm and you put your hip in and you take him over your hip. Essentially, you don't have to block the ankles, like you can also block the hip if you can trip them high. Also, into that direction, essentially what works is the sacrifice throws, where you kind of, and, and this is really similar to some sweeps, let's say you have kind of some kind of a control, and you put the leg on the hip, kind of pop, and you lift, you hoist, and they go over, right? Straight to the front. Um, the classical straight to the front throws are the hardest to master. And these are actually the big judo throws, like your, your, your seoinage, your koshinage, all these things, like, yeah. So, stand on the cross again here. So, that's the straight line. And I always have to think about 
where is the straight line angled. Because that will determine the reaction or the direction of my throws to where I'm doing. So um, I like to say that you need to have like one or two really solid throws or, or like types of throws. And actually, this is for like kind of two directions. We don't have throws directly to the side, but what I like to imagine is that uh, there's actually so actually there's front and back, and the other directions are the four directions here. So it's four diagonals. So you have back and front and four diagonals, which means six principal directions. And you need to have one or two throws, which coincide with the directions. And you need, but, but you need to be able to feint all six directions. So you kind of need to have one or two decent throws slash directions, and then additional three to four like crappy throws that you might never actually succeed with, but you can actually, actually kind of pretend that, okay, I'm bad at this, but I can pretend that they might happen. Okay, so what happens with the diagonals? With the diagonals, the point is that I can't just like block this ankle and push because he will step, right? He will step like this, okay? So, so this doesn't like work exactly, so, so just pushing is, is not enough to the diagonal. Same thing to the front, like if I think about this line here, if I kind of just pull him towards this line, nothing will happen. So, what I need to do in those four directions is that I need to block out the direction and I need some rotation. You block from inside or from outside and you kind of rotate and take down towards the direction. And that's that. You can forget about the 40 throws, you're gonna self-invent about like 20 of them without knowing that you do. Okay, so we're gonna get into actual directions. Uh, uh, so let's say I got this grip, we, we kind of played with getting the, getting the hand grip, right? And we did the switch and arm drag and went to the back, which is ideal. But the second best thing is that I either go sleeve and collar or straight into the collar and I want a cross grip on my collar. I have a whole dragging game here. We're going to have the collar dragging to here as well. Already the video is done. It's called uh, how to become a collar drag king or queen or whatever. Uh, so uh, I, I'm fishing for this grip. Collarbone or higher? I wouldn't grab chest height. Like it's, it's more strong. In judo, like you can generalize the higher the grip is, the stronger it is. So, so also like collarbone grip, good. Behind the head grip, also good, sometimes even better. Okay, so we go into this grip. Mm -hmm. Now, whew, if I could push him back via blocking both legs, I would, but that's impossible. I can theoretically take myself over, or like take him over, but these are the hardest throws. As I said, the front throws are the hardest. So I'm going to do something easy. I'm going to start to move him. So you move him, move the person. If, uh, if they take some kind of a grip, it doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do now is that, especially if you, haven't, if you have judo experience, do it off the random movement. If you don't have judo experience, move them some way, take angles, take other angles, you can take both angles, stop, and he stops as well. Okay, here is the line, here is the other line, and think about the diagonals now. And you want to block at the diagonals. So. Step here, just step your foot behind theirs. Kind of you can you can kind of step on their heel. And think about if now if I can push him now, push and turn, for example, towards this diagonal. Okay. There is your something something guard, right? Is it big, is it small? Is it doesn't really matter, right? <coughs> so it was this leg front, right? Obviously, if I pull here and stop. Okay, this leg obviously is too far, so I have to think about this diagonal, because this is the straight, this is the straight, 
Here is a nice diagonal, okay? Here is a nice diagonal. Hip in, keep him close, hip in. Block with your leg. And now, turn towards the diagonal. Okay, this is your core. Coach, yeah, coach man. So, names don't matter. So, to start thinking about the diagonals, to the back. It's the only two backside diagonals at first. So you start here, you either take the grips yourself, same side collar and wrist. If I was quick, very good. You can also wait while he, he kind of take the, this, start to move, start to move. When you have judo experience, do that stuff off of random movement. If you don't have, stop. Hmm. Okay, probably here. So figure it out, okay? Go, do it, do it, do it, do it. Uh, these were the two backwards diagonals. And now, framing success, like kind of, I, I try to frame now as a coach what is success here, is that when you're playing around with that, don't think of a throw, and specifically a green throw, as like the main result here. A good result is when you can make them stumble or step according to your terms. That's already good enough. And that's the main function, actually, of the two backwards diagonals. That you can make the person step and stumble. Important thing here, if you're doing those uh, kind of reaching with a hooks things, and it's, it becomes especially bad in nogi, uh, and even judoka do it. Uh, so, uh, two things. Don't start to kick people in the shins. Because like, whoop, like, Oh, I've been kicked like that in jiu-jitsu competitions by judoka. Not fun. So, so don't kick into the shins. Either step behind and kind of you anchor the leg, or you kind of catch with your the sole of the foot. That's why I didn't put two boots on for the class to be able to demonstrate that. You kind of hit with the sole of the foot. And in my opinion, like in judo, you have the ashiwaza, like the ashi or sweeping techniques. And you have the gari, which are kind of reaping techniques. They are a continuum. They are not distinctive categories, actually. Basically, the difference between, between them is uh, if the leg is light or heavy. And I cannot control that fully. That's why I think kind of one, two, technique, one, two, technique. That's a bad way to learn because it teaches those throws as categories as opposed to continuums. Because I need to be able to adapt. Obviously, you have this, if I can make the leg light, like the nice foot sweeps, right? And boom, he flies to the ground, right? If I do it like off the momentum. But I need to be able to adapt super quick. I might go for a foot sweep, and he steps, um, but just leave the foot to the ground. I might miscalculate. No, leave the leg to the ground. So I might miscalculate, it turns into a body, OK? So, so I react, if I, I go for some kind of initiative and I'm able to change according to whether the leg is light or heavy. I reap the heavy leg, I sweep the light leg, but it's kind of a continuum as opposed to categories, okay? So, but, um, uh, let me say. So, <clears throat> now, um, if I'm able to, like, this is a very good defensive stance, like this same side it starts. It's, it, pretty hard for him to throw me, even if he takes an inside grip here, right? Because I have a cross grip, I can easily pull my elbow in, so he can't get a strong grip, okay? Uh, but what happens if I start to chase that, uh, chase that Kouchi here, he will step. And now he's like more parallel, and this side is definitely open. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a forward diagonal, but it's going to be a turning throw. We're not going to do full turning throws, because I said these are the hardest to learn and master. But we're going to do like a bad seo inoke. We can do it when he's bent over. If he's straight like a proper judoka, it's super hard to do. But if it's the kochi and he's here, what I just do is that I put my both knees on the ground, depending on the other leg position. I might go here. Or I'm going to go all the way in, so I might go here. Kind of like where there is space, basically, is the good answer. And what I'm just going to do is that while I'm jumping my both knees to the ground, 
I try not to smash into his foot here. I can jump way far here if I want to. <coughs> While I'm smashing my knees to the ground, it's a mat, so I kind of, I block it with my toes. I don't like, poof, go knees first. But I kind of jump into a squat and then put the knees to the ground. I'm not doing it in two steps, but it's like swinging on a rope. You see there's tension here. And when I lift my feet off the ground, all my 80 kilos is going to hang from these two grips. So what's going to happen is this. It's hard to do it slow, but I'm kind of trying to do it slow. So I'm going to jump and turn and you see. Okay. Main mistake is to jump and pull. That's not going to work. So I'm pulling even before I'm jump jumping. So I'm going to do one like a normal speed now. Okay, and it's, it's kind of a mix between the one forward diagonal and straight to fr uh, front. It's a super easy fall because my grips force him to make a correct fall, like a correct fall. This is like a bad seoinaga, same side seoinaga. So you move them, you can do your like, okay, and if it's hard, or you can motivate them with a kawuchi. Turn to a 90 degree angle, knees to the ground, and hang. You can slowly do it like this. Really hang here. Okay, so you kind of put all the weight hanging from the collar. Do you need to see it again? Okay, one more time. So I got my grips. I'm playing here, Kawuchi. And kind of pull down. But don't do up and down. It should be kind of like turn and down immediately. So you kind of make them do a somersault. Upper body twist is super important. That you force the upper body twist. Just like in Jiu Jitsu sweeps. Go ahead, do it. So, um, with that throw, again, kind of, if I don't get a clean throw, that's fine. If I do that type of a throw, a throw in, in judo training, maybe to a judo blue belt or like a green belt, maybe even brown belt, uh, even then there is very unlikely to throw them like for judo points because they're going to kind of face plant themselves. And that, in my jujitsu head, that should count as a moral victory. <laughs> anyway, okay. So that means I actually did the technique well, and they need to defend the back. And this goes actually for, for uh, jiu-jitsu as well. Uh, Jakub asked me the quick question. It's kind of like, uh, okay, I managed to get them bent over. Don't forget to actually play with those. And this was a shitty feint. I, I didn't actually feint, and I should do better. But, um, so when I go for the throw, and they kind of just go into turtle, basically. Kind of throw, and they, nope. Uh, I'm sorry, it's too good of an uke. So um, just go to your knees and kind of turn. Whoops, they turn. I have my grips. Wherever I am, front headlock or sometimes I'm on the side, the easiest chance is to keep this grip because that prevents them from standing up, right? And they just go take the back. And if they block the guard from that, I will get my takedown points if the referee is normal. If I stay here, just the same as with sweeps, I get the takedown points because I'm behind both elbows and I'm keeping a turtle kind of turtle top control. In IBJJF, I get two points for that. And obviously, I can start taking the back. The other thing what we can do and what we will immediately drill is that, and if you look at the Rodolfo Vieira study as well, is that um, I can kind of spam it. It's a good throw in the sense that I can spam it. I always shoot for the cross diagonal as well, if the legs are close, like if managed to kind of bring here, I can try to kind of knock him on his ass. Uh, but if he kind of steps and starts to turn, and I will throw, and if I do it like a bad version, don't, don't fall right now, so I, maybe I mess up, I kind of do like, and it just doesn't fall. The good thing about these grips, as opposed to regular sale, is that he doesn't have a good access to my back. If he tries to take my back here, I can say, there is a chance for wicked flying armbar, but I just need to be aware about it if I'm actually going with somebody who might do that, right? 
I might kind of, on the straight color, you can always go over the head. I'm not going to show it, but uh, so, but you can spam it in the sense that, okay, I did it badly, didn't fall, come up, didn't fall, come up, now he fell, okay? So I kind of like spam it with me. And especially good if that is that if I don't just spam that, but I also add the two backwards diagonals in there. So I already have three directions I mess with. I do the front diagonal, didn't work, come up, immediately hit the forward diagonal or the other side forward diagonal, maybe again didn't work, go into the cell again. So now, in the next five minutes, before the very last five minutes, try to combine those three directions. Blocks to the backward diagonals, intermediate with the COE variation. If needed, spam the COE. Okay, COE is arm throw, like the, it's the uh, version of the turning throw. Any questions? So try to, uh, don't go, like, don't go super fast, but go fluid. So try to, you can move slow, but make it continuous movement, okay? And then add speed. Okay, ready, set, go. So, the important part now is that even if you just take these basically three directions, the two back diagonals, and I consider it the front diagonal kind of, the, so you have, if they stand like this, what we did right now is kind of blocking the legs, you can, and always consider, you can block outside, you can block inside, you can block with both legs. Doesn't matter, like you don't need to figure out what are the names for the old techniques, think about blocking the leg and the diagonal direction. Obviously, there are some knee safety tips, especially if you kind of start to do like that stuff. But, uh, but that's why I recommend in the beginning kind of do the small blocks, right? So either kind of whoop here, or you do like here, right? So we did this diagonal, this diagonal, and the front row to kind of this diagonal, right? Because straight to the back is complicated if I have asymmetrical grip, because I cannot block both his legs like this, okay? So, so this is kind of out of the game, right? Totally back is out of the game. Even though like you need to st sometimes still think about the driving direction because let's say I do this block here, he steps, whoop. Now, if he's, the line is there, I might kind of be do that and still try to like force him. It's still gonna be like a more of a diagonal, both legs and the block. But never mind. What I wanted to say is that you can now already kind of you kind of have a bad understanding of probably like more than 10 throws, actually, because kind of there's endless variations, as I said, like, it's like already like one, two, three, four, right? Five, okay, and then some more sweeps, and so, so, so you don't need to kind of have all those names, but you can kind of chain them, right? And then you have the turning throw here. So, uh, now, absolutely essential is one more direction, and this is the other front diagonal. And there you kind of, traditionally, you can do it more of a, like the classical judo grip, it's called Sasaya Tsuri Komiyashi, which is basically you block this side, and then you kind of twist and turn and, and throw them. And it sometimes looks like more like some more ashiwaza, but, but sometimes like more turning. But of this grip, Basically, you can just think collar drag. And I actually like to think uh, that I can kind of hit for the far leg. So what I can do is kind of, I can really turn here and try to like block and turn over here. But I think it's the riskier option. And I like to go for the proper drag, especially if I have the collar grip and I cover it in the video, like there's like half an hour on specifically the drag. And they actually hit the far leg, so it becomes kind of a bit unorthodox in today's scheme. So I kind of put here. And when they go to turtle, because they can, because I'm not turning them enough, 
That's fine. Go for my two points here. Okay? But, but you need to think about that we did like these directions with the foot blocks. We did the turning, turning diagonal here with that grip. Whatever grip I have, I also need to have something in that diagonal that I can effect effectively threaten with. So basically the four diagonals are the important threat direction. I can add like a sacrifice throw here if I kind of good at it and Joey covers it in their instructional, which is the fifth direction. But the main things, especially with asymmetrical grip, beat this, beat this, beat this. It's still the same. I'm still thinking about there's this diagonal. Whoop, maybe bad to do it. Like you see, it's the diagonal and it's a throw here. This diagonal, like it's not rocket science, it's judo. So, and obviously the turning throw, now I don't have the, like the, the Morote uh, Serenaga version that we did. Now I need to have some proper judo technique to get the hip in and kind of try to throw them. So I need to have like two directions on the diagonals to the back and I need to have two diagonals to the front and possibly also the overthrow. Okay, so, so five, five directions where I can fake and paint and out of those five I need to be actually good at one or two throws, not more. You can add all the leg wraps if you want, kind of orange material, don't sit down for out of time. So let's say if you kind of like Okay, that was the judo class. Judo is so complicated. And I'm here. That's fine. It was just not the topic of today. You can always add that. Okay? So what I want you to do in like last three minutes is that now think about all the four diagonals. Those who are like more advanced, you can take other grips. The principle works the same if I take this grip or this grip. I would go for the bad judo, I would always go for the belt grip, right? Belt grip, yeah. It's a really strong grip. Even if they get a collar grip on me, if I can't get a belt grip here, the collar grip is worth nothing. I could still kind of now start to think about directions. Okay? Stop when needed, stop, plot those diagonals on the floor, and then turn and put them down this way. Or go more fast and just do the, basically, three directions we did today. Okay? Last three minutes, go. Take turns in actually moving each other about and throwing. So, obviously, I'm going to stick around on the open mat. If you have questions about the class, come ask me. Uh, what I need to emphasize, or what I want to emphasize, so first of all, like you can practice this kind of direction awareness without throwing each other, so it actually makes for a good warm-up uh, warm exercise. You can just move, don't do coordinated movement. Like, it's not Aikido we're doing. So kind of, yes, he's like a helpful partner, but I'm trying to understand, like, oh, okay, if I pull here, this leg comes forward. Aha, uh -huh. okay, this is the straight line, these are the diagonals. Okay, I might go here, I make him stumble. Ah, cool, I might go here, make him stumble. Now there's my throw, come back up, and try to, up, 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 and, and you can pull them up. So, so literally, kind of, as a warm-up drill, they shouldn't fall. Because that's what kills you as an adult, it's the constant, going down and getting up. So as a warm-up drill, do it without grip breaks and do it without falls. And you can practice really core parts and get better without really minimizing danger risk. That's, that's one thing, that how I encourage you to practice this material. The other thing, is more technical, is that I know I set the bad example. This is why a coach should actually kind of do everything 110% correctly is that you don't want to be lazy with the feints. And our brains are kind of bad because we do get lazy even without noticing. If I know it's a warm-up drill and he knows it's a warm-up drill, it really easily becomes this... Like, I'm, I'm getting bad habits this way. So, I don't have to go super hard. I don't mean that. But I should understand that, okay, this is here and I actually can pull and step. 
Okay. Okay. And uh, so, so don't get lazy and also don't reach. Like this way, I cannot sweep the leg like this. Yeah, not gonna happen. The, the main point in judo is I get the hips close. I get the hips close and I get much contact. So I can be bent from the waist, but I kind of, I pull the leg and now if I want to go for some kind of a reap, I do get, have to get close. Because if I'm kind of here, he can just, like later, he can really step out and I, I don't realize. So, so you need to go deep even when you're practicing. The Kouchi example, yes, I do block it here, but I'm moving forward with my hip. This is what allows me to kind of pull the leg really out from under. So be precise and conscious about how do that, like it needs to feel strong that you can actually pull and push forward with the body. Because otherwise it's, it's so easy to get like, Neh. I even see judoka kind of doing that and you just get bad hats. Okay? Obviously, I can't look into your brains and realize how well did you get the idea of like importance of four diagonals and, and then kind of building your game off of that, even when you don't know many throws. You can now go into the YouTube rabbit hole and look through the 40 classical throws and figure out the one and two that you actually might like and then apply them to the directions principle. There's no point in asking the question like, did anybody understand or did any... Did, did you like the class because you're geared towards the yes answer? But I'm going to stick around, just like previous instructors have said. I'm here till tomorrow morning, ask me questions, come for a roll. Let's do some judo, maybe. So thank you for coming, and let's take a group picture. Thanks. Awesome.